Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to start our numericals of gas turbine power plant. The problem number one. In the problem number one, a gas turbine has a our all pressure ratio. Uh, I am reading the question. So the things that are given to us is the pressure ratio. That is our all pressure ratio. Maximum cycle temperature is also given. And uh, uh, the turbine drive the compressor and an electric generator the mechanical efficiency of the driving the mechanical efficiency of driving is also given and the ambient temperature is 20 degrees centigrade the ambient atmospheric temperature is also given we have to convert it into Kelvin scale air enter the compressor at the rate of 15 kg per second so the air entering rate is also given that is 15 kg per second and we have also given the compressor efficiency uh, we have given the compressor efficiency that is 80 percent uh, it is given that the isentropic efficiencies of compressor and turbine are 80 and 83 uh, efficiency of turbine is also given that is 83 percent uh, now we have to neglect the changes in kinetic energy, the mass flow rate of the fuel and all the pressure losses. And what we have to calculate? We have to calculate the power output, the cycle efficiency and the work ratio. So the basic thing, uh, uh, the basic parameters that we should know is the what is the CP for air in this gas turbine? What is the value of gamma that is um, uh, the coefficient? of a adiabatic exponent uh, and what is the value of cp cp for combustion and expansion process i uh, mean uh, cp for the fuel what is gamma for combustion and expansion process so it is very simple and here is our uh, diagram here is our compressor it is coupled to a turbine and turbine is coupled to a generator and here is the entry and here is a combustion chamber and here is point number four that is exit of turbine so uh, how to write the simple thing is that all the inlets inlet to compressor this is temperature outlet of combustion chamber is this one that is uh, also given as you see as we can see that the maximum temperature uh, is always after the combustion chamber so the, after the combustion chamber the temperature is 550 degree centigrade and atmospheric temperature is 20 degree centigrade that is the inlet temperature and and we know that compressor efficiency is equal to 80 percent and turbine efficiency is equal to 83 percent so let's come here again you may say that the entry entry temperature is this one that is 20 degree centigrade plus 273 uh, so we have to convert this, this degree centigrade into kelvin and it is, it is the exit of the combustion chamber we know that the gas flow from uh, compressor toward the combustion chamber so in combustion chamber at the exit we have 823 kelvin plus 270 uh, 823 kelvin so these are the basic things so this point number three is the exit of the comp um, combustion this is the combustion process two to three and one to two is the compression process and three to four is the uh, turbine work uh, output i mean expansion process and four to one is against the uh, uh, the fluid uh, temperature it decreases and it uh, goes toward the it is actually the here it is the exhaust and here the here it is a new charge so uh, in this uh, way the process occurs now uh, how to approach this particular problem the thing is that We actually want to know this T2. We actually want to know this T2. This T2 is our desired. 
so what we know we know the pressure ratio that is given in the question pressure ratio is given in the question that we know pressure ratio the overall pressure ratio is given overall pressure ratio mean the uh, pressure as we know that pressure ratio is always calculated in case of compressor so the pressure at the exit and the pressure at the inlet of the compressor is given that is p2 by p or p1 we know the value of gamma in this case and we uh, we know the inlet temperature so by uh, by using these uh, inlet temperature compression ratio mean overall pressure ratio and gamma minus 1 over gamma this is the relation uh, from the basics of thermodynamics that we have studied before so d2 s is equal to 293 into uh, 5 into 0 0.4 divided by 1.4 so t2 s is equal to 293 into 5 uh, it, that is pressure ratio and we calculated a t2 as 464.06 kelvin now the problem is as the pressure ratio uh, by using this uh, relation we calculated for the isentropic process but our real process is not isentropic it is from 1 to 2 that is not isentropic process that is not reversible it is actually adiabatic but it is not reversible process it is adiabatic uh, compression but it is not reversible compression we cannot reverse it so we have to actually uh, we we should actually know the uh, efficiency uh, between a uh, adiabatic and isentropic process so the uh, luckily we know the value of the isentropic um, efficiency in case of compression that is given to us that is t2s minus t1 uh, divided by t2 minus t1 so by using this relation we will calculate the uh, value of t2 uh, that is that comes here t2 value is 506.82 kelvin so how we calculate it? we just plug in the values we know the value of t t2s that we calculated just uh, uh, instant before that is here we know the value of t2 uh, we actually do not know the value of t2 we have to find it so we will shift it toward uh, to this side and uh, we know the value of isentropic efficiency uh, that is given to us we know the inlet temperature we know the inlet temperature so just by plugging in the values we will get the value of t2 by doing the same uh, uh, steps for the turbine we know that uh, in turbine uh, we have if we draw here so this is our t and this is our s now we have uh, uh, completed this process uh, uh, this is one and this is two and uh, this is three and this is four now we want to uh, repeat the same process uh, for the uh, next process that is the turbine 3 to 4 uh, so we know the uh, pressure ratio uh, so the overall pressure ratio the overall pressure ratio is given to us it means that this is this ratio is also for compression and this ratio is same for expansion so here is t3 and here is t4 t3 and here is t4 uh, you must know that t3 will uh, come first because in this process it is expansion and in the last process in the last process uh, we will ha we had a t p2 by p1 and here we also have p2 by p1 now uh, what it, it actually shows that uh, this compression ratio is not the reverse as for P, P2 by P1, P2 by P1. We know that P2, we know that P2 is equal to P3. We know that P2 is equal to P3 and P1 is equal to P4. Why? Why it is so? Uh, the reason is that the pressure at point 2 is equal to pressure at point 3 and pressure at point 1 is equal to pressure at point 4. So if we uh, so we can write this equation as T3 by T4S is equal to 
P3 by P4 into gamma minus 1 power gamma. Uh, I hope that and this uh, QD is uh, created here. So T3 by T4 is equal to P2 by P1 that is equal to P3 by P4 into gamma minus 1 by gamma as uh, it is uh, given. So by, by just plugging in the values the, now um, what is our desired? Our desired is this is T4S. This is T4S. We want to know T4S. So our T4S will be equal to uh, we will shift it uh, there and we will uh, this will become in the denominator and this will become here it will come here and it will become the nominator so we want to know the value of T4S T4S will be equal to the uh, value of the T in uh, T3 that is the peak temperature uh, that is this one uh, this is T3 uh, divided by the uh, pressure ratio so it uh, comes as T4S is equal to 552.54 Kelvin so it's it is equal to 552.54 uh, Kelvin that is equal to 552.04 Kelvin so so simple uh, now the same problem as the previous one as we have calculated for uh, from 3 to 4 we have calculated from 3 to 4 but it is isentropic process we want it is not our actual process we want to calculate uh, our uh, we want to calculate our temperature at the point four, not at point four s. Uh, so the we will repeat the same steps. So we know that again the isentropic efficiency is equal to T three minus T four over T three minus T four s. Always remember that uh, isentropic values always come in denominator. Isentropic always come in denominator isentropic always come in denominator okay so uh, so just plugging in the values we know that isentropic efficiency water bind is also given that is 0.83 is equal to 823 minus t4 823 minus t4 and here it is 823 minus 552.04 okay 823 so by just plugging in the values we will calculate the value of T4 uh, so our T4 comes here and now come to the next one uh, we will just plug all the values and we will calculate the value of T4 so now the basic thing is that why we calculated all these values actually we want to calculate the heat input to, to the compressor for heat input we should uh, we uh, sorry for heat input we uh, should know the value of t3 and we should know the value of t2 t2 uh, why because uh, this is our process and 1 to 2 this is combustion this is combustor 2 to 3 and here it it 1 2 3 and 4 so heat input in combustion is equal to m dot cp t3 minus t2 so here it is t3 here it is t2 we will calculate the difference that is it is it is gas to by so we will take the benefit of cp it is actually the h3 minus h2 no uh, but uh, it is gas turbine so it is a uh, ideal gas so we may use h is equal to m dot cp into t we will use this relation so a heat input in combustor is equal to this one uh, we know the value of mass flow rate that is given to us uh, and we know the value of cp that is also given we know the value of t3 we know the value of t2 we have calculated all the values and we just plug in all the values and we will get the heat input in kilowatt uh, so now compressor input power compressor input power is what 
this one this process t2 by t1 we if we know the uh, uh, h value at t2 and h value at t1 we will just uh, uh, take the difference and as h is equal to cpt uh, mcpt so just plug mcpt here so we know mass flow rate we know the value of cp we know t2 we know t1 so it is equal to 32 to 3.34 kilowatt now turbine output power is equal to m dot cp t3 minus t4 uh, m dot cp t3 minus t4 turbine output power is equal to m dot cp t3 minus t4 so just plug in the values m dot cp t3 t4 we have calcul uh, already calculated all the values so it is equal to 3879.52 kilowatt this is uh, so, so this is power uh, turbine power output but uh, we know that uh, this turbine is actually coupled with a compressor so we have to uh, so this from this uh, power we will do two works uh, we may draw it here this is turbine here expansion process take place and here it is out, its output and here is our combustion chamber and here uh, we have our compressor so this compressor is coupled with this turbine so this the power of this turbine will uh, some of the power will be lost in rotating this shaft that will rotate this compressor and that will run this compressor so power output is equal to 3879.52 minus 3223.4 so power output is equal to 656.18 kilowatt okay So uh, now uh, the second thing that we want to calculate is the cycle efficiency. Now the cycle efficiency uh, you may know that it is the uh, network output divided by power output. So we uh, have already calculated the network uh, network that is 6, uh, 656.18 kilowatt network in, in term of powers please remember it network in term of power. We have calculated that is 656.18 kilowatt divided by 5454.10. This is what? This is actually power output. Power output is turbine output power. Five four five four point one zero. So we just plug in the values and we will get the value of cycle efficiency. Now the work ratio is equal to net power output divided by gross power output. Uh, one thing that I want to repeat again is that here it is uh, net work or power output net work or power output that is actually divided by heat input supplied that we have but heat we supplied so how we calculated the heat supplied we calculated from here heat input to the combustor this is our supplied heat that is m dot cp t3 minus t2 So here our comes uh, it comes the combustor value. I may write it here. Combustor value. And so network output is the difference of turbine and compressor divided by the value of heat input to the combustor 
so this is heat a uh, heat input are supplied that is actually the heat that we get from combustor so uh, you should know that our heat source is our heat source is combustor our heat source is combustor now we want to calculate the work ratio that is net power output divided by gross gross power output net power output is 656.18 and gross power output is 30 38.79.52 so just plug in the values and we get the value of work ratio that is 0.169 uh, and it has no units because units has been cancelled uh, up and down in the nominator and in the denominator Uh, I hope so that this question um, is uh, understood by most of you, and I hope that it will be beneficial for you.